In today's follow-up video, I'm going to be continuing to look at this Anycubic Mega Pro 2-in-1 printer, and today I'll get the laser engraver set up and give it a go. Okay, so in terms of the in-the-box advice or guidance on what to do for this printer, it's pretty limited for the laser engraver. It does give a warning that this is just for advanced users, which is probably a good suggestion. Um, it does, however, tell you how to get this clipped on. So all you have to do is push it on the front of the head of the printer like so. There's a little bit of metal that sticks out of the top of this laser engraver and that's perfect for the alignment. So presumably that's where we want it to be. It then says to tighten it. So there's a little grub screw on the side and you can tighten that with an Allen key. All these Allen keys were included in the original package. There you go, that's nice and sturdy. Obviously, you do want to make sure the fan's at the top and the laser is at the bottom. You don't want it suddenly shooting out upwards. Uh, yeah, not a good idea, that. Okay, the next bit is to then unclip this little cable and plug it in down here where you originally had plugged in the green cable for the printer head. These cables are a little bit stiff to get out so just do that carefully so that you don't pull the wires out of the connecting point. And actually I've just noticed that I put the cable round the printer but you want to make sure you follow the same line as all this filament, filament guide tube. Perfect. Then you can use the little cable ties to tie the laser cable to the filament guide tube and cables there. So it's one that was holding the cable originally and they've also provided a few extra just to make sure it is nicely held in place. Okay, so once that's done, setup is effectively done. <laughs> so that was pretty quick and easy. All you have to do now is switch the printer on. So. As it says in this instruction manual here, there is an additional guide on the SD card, which I'll go over in a minute. Um, I have had a look at that, and that just tells you how to get this to actually work. Um, there are already some pictures on the SD card that it comes with, so I'm just going to run one of those off for now for this video. The first thing it said to do is a laser indication to see the sort of square or the working area that this laser is going to go under. Um, it says to do that with the craft paper that it comes with the printer, but I'm going to use just some standard paper because uh, then I can do a, a laser test directly on this craft paper. And then I'm just going to go to print. Got here, dinosaur BMP. So we click on that. Yeah, that's the file format that you need to set up your image in is BMP then got different settings uh, for now we're just going to click laser indication see what happens ah shut my glasses on So you can see there, it's going round and round in the area. I don't know if we have to stop this. Ugh. The only trouble is you can't see the screen when you've got the glasses on because they're so bloody dark. Yeah, so you push the same laser indication button again to see where it is basically. Okay, so we can now go ahead and get that started. I'll just, I'll just do it on the paper, actually. Yeah, these glasses being so damn dark is a bit of a pain because I really am struggling to see much at all. But what you do have to do is tape your paper to the, to the bed or your card or whatever you're, whatever you're laser engraving. That just ensures that it stays in place. Uh, and then begin carving. So, right, let's begin carving. 
Okay. Right, so when it is actually carving or doing the engraving, it does indeed do a z-axis level first, which is good because obviously then that does give you control over the height. At the moment, you can probably see better than me, but it doesn't look like a lot is happening. In fact, I'm just going to stop it straight away because, you know, at least now I know this time that there is a little bit of time between it starting and uh, the, the laser starting. So I can actually look at the screen for a second before I put these super dark glasses on. Now, while it's going, a few other things to talk about that came up in the guide. You might have to adjust the, the laser, uh, the laser focus points, and you do that by rotating over here. Uh, other than that, uh, what can it carve? It's, it's obviously not a, not a particularly high powered laser, so don't expect to be cutting metal with this. Um, however, I have seen on a few forums people using these to laser engraved anodized metal, so that's where it's had a coating. Uh, and effectively what you would do in that situation is just take off that coating so you're back to the base aluminium, which looks quite cool. I might try that in another video. So it's certainly looking pretty out of focus at this point. I'm not sure if you're supposed to adjust while it's going. Again, not a lot happening. So I'll stop that. What I did notice when it was printing there is that the laser itself isn't really uh, in focus. It had quite a big laser point size um, and it's only meant to be 0.1. So obviously that means you're getting quite a lot less power than you should be. And also you wouldn't be getting a neat job either. So that does need to be adjusted. To adjust the focus, we have to tighten this. It doesn't look like, and I couldn't see in the guide, that there was any sort of assisted setup for this focus. Uh, so it might be a case of just doing a few passes. Um, so I've just done one there. I've just, one, I've just done one little Titan. I'm now gonna see how that comes out. Again, it's still pretty out of focus. Okay, so I had a look at the manual and the main thing or reason it said for uh, the points not coming out is turning the laser intensity up, which as we saw at the start, wasn't really doing anything. So the only other thing I can change um, was the focus. I didn't seem to be able to get the size any smaller for that really close layer height. So upped it to 10 and then as it was printing, adjusted this little knob here, uh, tightened it and loosened it until I got that really tight point. The test I did a second ago was at 100 intensity and it went through the paper, as you can see, and uh, it did damage the, the, uh, the build surface, the ultra base build surface a little bit. So that's something to make note of. You might want to put it glass side up, but yeah, I don't care too much. Okay, so let's go again. Dinosaur with a laser intensity of 15 and a laser height of 10, which I've now tuned for, and begin carving. You are able to adjust the laser intensity mid, um, mid print. I don't know what you call these things, mid engrave. Um, I don't really see the benefit of that because if it's, if it's, got, if it's gone wrong, uh, it's not, it's too much or not enough, then you've sort of ruined the piece. The only benefit would be for testing. Like for example, now I can see it's not really coming out. So if I go return settings, laser, and adjust the intensity now to say 50. So 50 might be better. I'll stop it, inspect it. It's going completely through. So we know that we need somewhere between 15 and 50. Let's try 25. Not doing a great deal, so I'm just gonna up that intensity again a little bit more. But we'll let that finish and see how we get on. It is painfully slow, but the detail is pretty damn good. Okay, so it finished. It took 12 minutes. Uh, it's quite cool. 
but it does, it does feel too slow. And unlike a printer, I wouldn't feel comfortable to leave this if I wasn't at least in the room. To do something bigger would take hours and I don't know, I'm not, I'm not really seeing a sort of viable use for this other than just a bit of fun. I don't think personally I would have anything I, I would use this for. Um, but, you know, it is, it is pretty cool that you can just whack it onto your printer and use the rest of the infrastructure that you've already got there. Maybe if you wanted to engrave tiny things like put a little logo on a key ring, um, like a wooden key ring or, or something like that, or sign your name on a, on a card with a laser. But again, there's not really any sort of commercial value to these things. It's just, uh, it's just something fun to, fun to be able to do, I suppose. Would I use it? Probably not. Does it work? Yes. As a side update, update I'm really enjoying this printer as a printer. Um, I discovered it's got some little screws uh, above the uh, Z-axis levelling end stops and so if you adjust them you can get really fine positioning for your bed and so I'll take back my my point into that I made in the initial impressions video that it would probably be hard to level for uh, new users because I actually think it's a really a really good implementation albeit not the most professional it works it works really well and uh, I've actually done quite a few little prints with this the other day and I used it in my bed leveling tutorial. So uh, yeah, thumbs up for that. I'm looking forward to doing the final review video in a couple weeks. As always, if you did enjoy this video, do give it a like, it helps me out. And also subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. I also do tutorials. And of course, we'll be doing the full review of this printer in about two weeks. Cheers.